In this video, as we start a new chapter where we will be dealing with strings, vectors and arrays, we will start off with the string type. So in the previous lectures, we have seen the various types that we have in C++ like the built-in types, the primitive types and the string type that we have here is an abstract data type. So we will see what is the use of the string type and how we can make use of it. So talking about the string type, it is used to store a sequence of variable length characters. So we have already seen another data type that can store characters and that was the character data type which we represent by char card. So there we saw that it is able to hold just one character at a time. But then there may be times when we want to store let's say a word or a sentence and such variable length characters. So in those cases we will be making use of the string type which will come in really handy. Now when we use the string type, the IO stream header includes string but including the string header explicitly is a good practice. Now when we are using the string type, the string type is present under the string header and also it is present inside the IO stream header which we include in all of our programs. So it is okay if you just include the IO stream but it is also a good practice if you explicitly include the string type. So either you can do it this way. You can say include string header and also you can say using std string because the string type is also present under the standard namespace or you can also simply make use of the io stream header because as we already said string is already included in the io stream and we can also just make use of the namespace std because as we said string is present under the standard namespace so either way it is going to work but just remember that you have to include one of them in order to make use of the string type. Keeping this in mind, let us see how we can define and initialize string types. Now a string can be initialized in various ways. So let's see what they are. So this is the most standard or the default initialization where we say string and the name of the string. So for example, here we are using n1. So this is the default initialization and this would yield an empty string. So this is the same way that we declare other types like integers, characters and so on. So just specify the keyword string and the name of the string. Now here we are not initializing its value or we are not assigning anything here. So because of that n1 would be an empty string. Next we have something like this string n2 and within parenthesis I have n1. Now what this means is that n2 is a copy of n1. So whatever value is contained in n1 that would be copied to n2 if you make a definition like this. So here for example n1 is empty so if I copy n1 to n2, n2 also would basically be an empty string. Now next we have something like this string n2 equal to n1. Now here n2 is a copy of n1 so we can see that this is equivalent to the previous declaration that we just saw. Here also we are basically doing the same thing. We are just copying n1 to n2. So these two definitions are basically the same. Now next we have string n3 and within parenthesis and within double quotes we have value. Now what this means is n3 is a copy of the string literal value. That means we are assigning this literal value to this string called n3. So suppose I print n3 then it would print value value. So the literal is being stored inside this string. Now next we have something like this string n3 equal to value within double quotes and without the parenthesis. So here also n3 is a copy of the string literal value. So basically these two again are equivalent. So even in this case n3 would hold the literal value value. So these two are same and next we have something a little different and that is string n4 and within parenthesis we have an integer here n comma and then we have a character within single quotes. Now this means that initialize n4 with n copies of the character c. So here n would be an integer like I said. So any positive integer value followed by this character would mean that this character will be stored this many times inside this string n4. So for example if I say string n4 n in place of n if we say 5 comma c then c will be contained 5 times in this n4. So if I print n4 it would print c c c c c. Alright. So that is what this means. Now keeping this initialization methods in mind let us take a few examples to make it clear and we will also run the program in Visual Studio Code to see how it works. Okay. Now coming to the example here I am declaring a string called I am empty 
and we are not assigning any value to it yet. So this basically would be an empty string. So remember, we have to use the keyword string and this is the name of the string. Now next, I am declaring another string called hello there and then within parentheses, within double quotes, I am writing how may I help you. So what this means is that this literal or this sentence will be copied to this string called hello there. So hello there is holding how may I help you. Now next, we have another string called the reply and in that I am storing the literal can I get some coffee. So here we see we are not making use of the parenthesis but only the double quotes. But this also basically means the same like this previous definition where we are just storing this sentence into this string called the reply. Now next I am making use of this I am empty string. So remember we just declared a string called I am empty here but we did not assign any value. So at this point I am assigning some value to this I am empty string and what is the value? Sure, how would you like it? So that is the sentence or the literal that I am assigning to this string called I am empty. Okay, so we are making use of the same kind of initialization like we saw here. That is without the parenthesis and using only the double quotes. Next, here I am declaring another string called the answer and I am saying it is equal to I am empty. Now what does this mean? If you remember in the previous slide we said that this basically means we are copying the value that is present in I am empty to the answer. So what does I am empty contain? It contains sure how would you like it. So that will be stored in the answer as well. Now next I am declaring another string called a lot and if you remember this was the last initialization that we saw there. Here we have an integer comma followed by this s under single quotes. Now what this means is that s will be repeated 10 times and that will be stored inside this string called a lot. And next we are making use of the copy function again where we are declaring another string called sum ss and then inside that sum ss I am storing the value that is there in a lot. Now what does a lot contain? A lot contains 10 number of ss. So that same value would be copied to this variable sum ss. Now next we are declaring another string here called the request and in this I am storing the value with a lot of sugar thanks. Alright, so here again we are making use of double quotes as well as the parenthesis and in this string called the request we are storing this value. So we see that we have made use of all those initialization methods that we have seen in the previous slide in this example. Okay, now let's write the complete program for this in Visual Studio Code and run it and see how it is working. Alright, so here on Visual Studio Code, I have declared those same things over here again. So I won't explain these lines again, it's the same thing that I showed you in the slide. Now next, here in this cout statement, as you can see, I am printing hello there, which means this one, how may I help you, followed by a new line and then the reply. What is the reply? Can I get some coffee? And again a new line and then the answer. Now what is the answer? The answer should have the value of I am empty and what is I am empty? I am empty has the value sure how would you like it. So that will be printed here followed by a new line again and then the request will be printed. What is the request? With a lot of sugar thanks. And then here I am not giving any new line nor any spaces and then I am printing sum ss. Now what is sum ss? Sum ss contains the value that is stored in a lot and what does a lot contain? A lot contains 10 number of ss. Alright, now let us run the program and see if the output is shown correctly. Okay, so the name of the program is ss1.cpp. Let's compile it. It has compiled successfully without any errors. Now let's run the output file a.exe and as you can see, how may I help you is printed. Then can I get some coffee? Sure, how would you like it? With a lot of sugar, thanks. Now it printed till this thanks and then this s was printed 10 times because we printed some ss string over here. So that is why this s is printed 10 times here. Alright, so we see that the program is working as expected and as we have explained. Okay, and also you can see here that I have included the io stream which we anyway have to and also I've included the string header. So even if I don't include this it would still work because as I said string is present inside io stream and then we have to make use of the namespace std which we are anyway making use for the cout, cin and things like that and also string is also contained within that so using namespace std would do but if you are not going to make use of using namespace std 
you have to make use of using std string. Alright, so that was an introduction to the string type, how we have to make use of it and we have also seen what are the things to keep in mind while using it and we have also studied the various ways in which we can initialize strings. So I hope this lecture was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.